Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing. If you can hear me. Hit me up, hit me up. If you can hear me, Niambieni. I've stayed so long, I've even, I even forgot to <laughs> to assemble my uh, to assemble my kit. <laughs> eh? DJ Yadla, thank you for tuning in. Karibuni sana. Mm, it's been long. It's been over three months. Winston camping. Karibu sana. Hannah, thanks for your shout out. Karibuni, karibuni. We are 14 now. Tukifika so moja tuanze on the topics of the day. Mwangi Muhammad, Santi sana. Moses Utieno, Santi sana. Karibu sana from Doha. Salimia watu wa Doha. The Eye of the Tiger. Thank you very much. Nani yao wengine wako area? By Doha is Somalia. Karibu sana. Feel at home. We are 21. We are 21. We are moving. Nilikuwa nafikiri now that I've been away. Mutangia na enthusiasm ingine. Abdun Malik. Santi sana. Kama kawaida. Kama kawaida. Also heat like. Mawama, karibu sana mawama. Tap, hit like. Tell us where you're from, where you're tuning in from so that we can be in sync. Stanley Karari. Hey, habari yako, Mr. Karari, my friend, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. From Fall River, Massachusetts. Welcome. Welcome, Mr. Muirori. Long time, long time. Hmm? Long time sana. Nilikuwa nafikiri mutaingia na fujo ni patekama watu miyamoja but naona enthusiasm is still low. Karibuni sana. I think we can just start with whoever is here. If you have any questions. Today I was like what happened was I think I first left TikTok. Hana, oh, you're from Kajedo, Karibu. Uh, I first left TikTok and then I, you know, because of, uh, you know, Christmas, I chilled a bit for YouTube. But YouTube has by far been a very, you know, you know, supportive, uh, you know, platform. So thanks, thanks. I don't take it for granted. I've been just up and down trying to make other things work. Mm, it's hard to simultaneously, uh, co you know, coordinate. And then I was in... I was in uh, Ivory Coast for, for a month for the Africa Cup of Nations. And that was, you know, a whole other experience altogether. But yeah, um, you know, we, we, we like doing these lives, but I really want to do it well. I really want to do long form and then find a way of uh, doing short form in the other platforms. Uh, Bavik, my longtime collaborators, Karibu Sana. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we, we see how we can, but you know, my, my ex participation has really ramped up, and you know, within a short period, you know, Kulikwana, I think there was a there is an app which is called Twitonomy. I think it ranks the you know, the, the the can we say the most influential tweets, and I appeared number nine on that, so was significant for me because I'd only started using uh, that particular account in August. Samuel Muirori, eh, si jangalia, ni tangalia, tukimaliza. Eh, asanti sana, kama, umetu, kama umerusha kakitu, there's no problem. Thank you very much. Eh, mukai mukirusha ili muna ni chocha. Na, naona TikTok guys, ni, what's up with YouTube guys? TikTok guys naona kule. Kama hii kitu ya Brian Shira, 
wameingia na faya ingine mi, I don't know. Wa, eh, eh, na mi swali nauliza watu wa TikTok na watu wa YouTube is there a difference? Because these guys on TikTok they are really mobilizing tunes. Eh, I wish kama ni mimi ningekuwa na clout kama ya nini ya nyakoa manani ninge I would be mobilizing fans for <laughs> for, for, for court cases eh, for you know stuff like that but they I think Kenyans are more in tune to their humanitarian side so anything that relates to philanthropy oh huyu ni mgonjwa huyu nini they move very fast but anything that requires strategic planning and investment and you know collective movement forward hiyo inakuanga a bit tricky i've, I've noticed uh, alex mnai thank you very much hey what what niambia wana ni miss naona kama ni ni scam naona kama ni wonga <laughs> but thanks thanks for the uh, th- thanks for the shout out so in tiktok i can see the mobilization right now from brian shira brian shira first of all is a whole new story um DJ Adla says Kenyans like pulling together when there is a cause and that is it is in that it is in the middle in the midst of that cause it's in the midst of appealing to your philanthropic imperative that happened your scammers on Engilianga very nicely because they know eh nikikuja na a nice word a nice gospel a nice what you already sold so eh, and and it's good and bad i don't want to go hard on anyone it's good and bad because when you are so susceptible to that kind of feeling it's almost like uh, odor oh thank you thank you for welcoming me back uh, santi sana kitengela i've been covering kitengela issues on twitter kuna time huyu anaitwaje huyu some lady was almost knocked down by boda boda guys and whatever So yeah so I was telling you about being susceptible to that kind of emotion it's almost like a dopamine hit so anytime somebody eh ana ana appeal to your wish imperative I wouldn't want to come in a wish I would want people to just be strategic so that eh yangu si uongo sitasema ya hao wengine but I'm a great fan and follower of your channel it's really nice to thanks Alex Mnai so yeah so I'm seeing like now his story of Brian Shira the way they are galvanizing support for him for his funeral and I'm not stopping them from doing anything but I wish they were giving him that support when he was alive in as much as uh, James Ngechu from Nyahururu karibu sana in as much as he may have had his life upside down and he was not living a conventional way I wish they availed those resources Eh, babila papu kama kawaida ameingia na 10 euros thank you bro eh, tulishindwa ulihepa wapi <laughs> eh, so 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 yeah so eh, we, we what can i say we uh, we we rally when you know perhaps when it's not necessary uh, because we should be giving people their flowers where they can still smell them and so i'm seeing Branchira is a cause of a lot of uh, social media d- discussion I even did a tweet about him because I saw a couple of people saying that you know he was a train wreck in motion and I'm wondering why didn't you do something because this guy was literally running away from paying a boda boda rider I don't know he had pandada boda boda and what I, you know this was a guy who was struggling with fans and if these guys are entertaining you or informing you or making your lives better one way or the other if you're in diaspora what i think you should now be strategic with how you uh, you move with your money uh, yeah so it's been a creepy week guys are saying that since benny hin came a lot of people have died <laughs> guys are blaming benny hin for the accidents and all the prominent people that like, immediately he left then people just started dying so it's it's weird being in you know this country and then you know uh, that's gitsan from mombasa uh uh-huh. so yeah so but i hope you've been you know keeping up with what i'm posting on x we've really been you know on top of things even you know without any support we've been on top of things keeping this government in check um you know when because they are overworking in the propaganda department i tell you If I wasn't doing this if there wasn't a couple of other people doing this me I don't know where we would be 
And I'm telling you for real. Like now today, I knew I had it speculated what Kipchumba Murkomen is going to go and say in parliament. I knew. I had a feeling. And so I had already started preempting. I had already started saying that further to the accident that happened in uh, Mombasa for the KU students, he was going to start now blaming drivers. Me, I have driven on that Mombasa road. I found a gaping pothole like this. And I was moving at high speed. Ikagonga Mguya, right? Ndiyo shok. Ndiyo nini? And by the time, Alex Mboro, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. And by the time nilikuwa nafika somewhere, so I had to stop and obviously change uh, the tire and everything. But by the time I was figuring somewhere else, nilipata BMW mpia ikona green plates, migumbili zimeisha za pandia left. Can you imagine? So these are the things that are causing accident. Medho, Santi Sana, I hope see your senator, wa Nyandaro. <laughs> So, can you, these are the things that are causing accidents. Our roads, like now I was driving in Ivory Coast, it's not, it's not as what Kenya is made to be. Because here in Kenya, we are Washington, Mwakina. Santi Sana, thank you for the welcome. P. Masha, P. Masha, tunakuanga na kule X, karibu sana. So, uh, uh, what was I telling you? Ivory Coast is, uh, is just a small country. Uh, but it's not what Kenya is made to be because I think people here are deluded in their sense of exceptionalism that Kenya is the best country north of Limpopo, south of the Sahara, but we are trash. And we are trash not because of us. We are doing, we are uh, contributing to our um, civic duty. We are, uh, we, are, we, are, we are doing all we can to be tax compliant, to pay, to do everything, but it's our leaders, it's the leaders you elect. So in Ivory Coast, every road has a minimum. It has been marked. There are, even in the rural areas, there, there is that street sign. Instead of, uh, uh, instead, of, instead of the bumps and the whatever, they just do a pedestrian crossing or what you call the zebra crossing. And then there is a small uh, traffic light. And then on every corner in Mechorua, there is a corner ahead. On the road in Mechorua. And then there are street signs. So we don't have that in Kenya. They make a road and then they go. Barabara haina sleeves, haina pedestrian, haina nini, haina road marking. And then they come and say, oh, bad drivers. But how do you expect people to drive well when you just erect a bump in the middle of nowhere? So I knew that Kipchumba Murkomen was going to use that as his punchline uh, to the senators because the senators, you know, they are equally corrupt. Them, they were there chasing and pursuing tenders from uh, Murkomen. So they were asking him like nursery school questions. Hmm? They were asking him stupid questions like, hey, 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 what do you think is the cause of accident? And then he starts saying, oh, I don't know what. Da, da. So you, the amount and the media was ready to project that lie that it's the drivers. While drive, there is error, there is human error in all accidents, but the large chunk of the Kenyan accidents is because of the roads. Because uh, the, the engineers, they are cutting shortcuts. Eh? They, are one, or they are cooling materials so that they can eh, remain with enough to build a flat in, in, in Ruaka or somewhere else. You understand? So this is the idea. This is the notion that we have to keep on carrying that. Everything that you're reading in the newspaper, listening to the media, is a lie. You understand? So the, the, your MPs are not there for you. Your MPs, even when they are summoning Murkomen, they are summoning him so that they can pursue their tenders. All of them have eh, tenders on the side. They have briefcase companies. They are paid for doing absolutely nothing. So we don't have an oversight mechanism because all our MPs and senators are captured. Now, once you understand that, then eh, you, you have a better understanding of this country. You know, we, we are talking about our debt. These guys, they, yeah, you, one of the stories that I've ever, the, you know, my most beautiful story was I was the first one when uh, well, these MPs, uh, these MPs from Muranga, there is an MP from Gatanga and another one from Kandara. Uh, David Kimani engineers should be held liable for road accidents. Yes, that is called criminal negligence. That is it. Uh, it's, it begins with, like now, those students who had died in a normal country, Kipchumba Murkomen should have resigned. He shouldn't have going, gone to get airspace, airtime eh, to regurgitate his stupidity and mental impotence in the Senate to talk to 
captured uh, individuals purporting to be the oversight mechanism of the country. Yeah. So I was telling you one of my most beautiful uh, things that I've done so far was I was the first one to tweet about the Gatanga and Kandara MP. I think uh, the Kandara is Wakili Mureu and another, the other one called Shege. And when they were going to gaslight avocado farmers, and they were, you know, the farmers initially they were they had fallen for their tricks because yeah, they were they are going there they are saying because KRA had gone there with E teams to try and now register the the farmers. And the farmers were reacting and kicking them away and telling them, yo, what nonsense are you bringing on us over here? But the MPs were there gaslighting the farmers, saying, no, KRA, you cannot register them over here. But they are the ones who had passed the finance bill 2023, which had this component of taxing farmers. And then suddenly they get selective amnesia when they, and then they come to play politics to the gallery. They come to play politics to the public and then the public, you fall for it without holding them accountable. And because I was there at the right time, uh, the story gained a lot of prominence because we had to remind them, you made this mistake, we, but it wasn't a mistake. It was deliberate. It was premeditated. You were bribed in the toilets. Yeah, you, you go there, you, you know, you're, you're doing your own garbage, and then suddenly you come and gaslight, which is the problem with our politicians is they're playing more politics in the media, in uh, public rallies than where they're supposed to be, which is parliament, which is senate. You understand? And until uh, David Kimani is saying Getaru interchange should be traditional cover leaf design, white, blah, blah, blah. Yes, Getaru has never even been fixed, that interchange. There is still places where you're going to see Eh? Uh, these guys are let, let, let to go with murder. And then the minister of uh, the, the CS of transport has the audacity to speak instead of stepping down, instead of resigning. What nonsense are you guys tolerating? You understand? So we are, we are, we are uh, I was telling you that our elected officials are politicking. They are where they are not supposed to be. You need to be auditing them based on their performance in the floor of the house. I was talking about Alice Nanga the other day. She's the MP of uh, Thika. What is she trending for now? Just twerking, just shaking her diab on TikTok without anything. She has not participated in anything related to parliament, related to discussing our bills. We have not had her input there in both national, Juen Jage, uh, Karibu Sana, Sora Hassan, kila siku nilikuwa na juliza ulienda wapi. I feel inspired here. Thank you. Uh, Asanteni sana. So, uh, we are here. You are here entertaining. You are giving them views. You are giving them likes. Uh, you are you're, you're sharing your DJ Yadla Nasema, the Western Bypass is shite. Leo walieka bump. Wameka bump jana. Leo kumekuwa na accident. These Kenyan engineers have... Uh, Wakona panya kwa kichwa. That's the that's the only thing that can be in their head. Cannot be a brain. Cannot be a functional b b muscle over there. Hmm? So we are here. We are, we are minding our business. You guys are just sharing Alice Nanga, shaking her diab. Hmm? Musomolo munasema na shukuru merudi. Nini ya mrushangi kakitu. Pesa enyu yote iko TikTok. Eh? Munataka ni kue hapa. Eh? Ivo, nime, 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 nime malizika hapa. Lakini sawa tu, when, when time avail, times avails, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be showing up. So, you're here giving these guys a lot of social media capital. You're giving them clout. And then they continue bullshitting for you. They are not uh, fulfilling their constitutional duty. They are not. And so here you guys are there with Peter Salasia. He's doing all the dumbest shit north of Limpopo, south of the Sahara. Hmm? Tom G is asking a good question. Has Alice Nanga ever given her maiden speech? No. Has, Rom, has Ronald Karauri given a maiden speech? No. So it depends on what you guys want. It depends on what you guys. It's you guys who are letting us down. You are unavailable when we are mobilizing for civic awareness, for civic duty, for civic participation. You are unavailable. And so I was drawing parallels with the kind of traffic that is on TikTok based on these philanthropic. Uh, philanthropical, uh, I'm not associated with that boga senator. <laughs> eh? We need you to rise to the occasion. It has to be deliberate. It has unaji force us. We are forcing ourselves because we have accurately pinpointed where our problems are. 
we have seen that our problem is X, Y, and Z. So, number one, will you continue sharing crap? Like now, Alice Nganga is just talking. Will you continue? Hmm? Will you be the one now who is sharing on WhatsApp groups? Hmm? No, you have to be, hmm? you, you, you have to step up to the plate. Hmm? You're James Ngesho, you're saying she was joyfully heckled. You have to be the people, you have to be the generation that liberates this country. I was seeing, I was seeing Rigiji, he was in Muranga University of Technology and he had a, 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 a discussion. Mm? And the theme was, I don't know, youth empowerment. Uh, he concocted some words. And I'm like, this guy was employed and appointed as a district officer in 1990. He was born in 1965. So he was, uh, he was appointed at that position in, uh, 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 when he was how many, uh, how old? He was 25 years. He was 25 years, he was appointed as a DO born in 1965 so he's going to be uh, how old he's going to be 60 years uh, within the next uh, no he's going to be 50 or 60 60 years next year <laughs> huh? he's going to be 60 years next year and he's telling us about youth empowerment well 1990 when he was being employed as a district officer <laughs> none of those children he was lecturing were born and those children, already they've been told that they are the children, the future of tomorrow. Well, already we can see clear signs that they, this government and the people in power and the boomers have no, they have no plan on leaving office. They have no plan of empowering the vast majority of the young population. So every time somebody asks me, like uh, James has asked me over there, is there hope with our voting patterns and trajectory. Can we now focus not on those who vote? Can we focus on the 8 million who didn't vote? Can we focus on the 4 million who didn't register to vote? You can see what happened. President Ruto had gone to some, somewhere and then he met guys who were making money from Remo and then there was this stupid kid who was there showing him and then Remo was, was shut down for Kenyans all because of his big mouth. Because what did KRA do? KRA went, started harassing that company that they want their returns and what. So they just disconnected Kenyans from a platform that a few were making money all because of the loud mouth of this one. But it also shows you that this government has no uh, intention of creating opportunities for the young people. The ones they are calling the leader of tomorrow, the ones eh, Rigiji has gone to tell them about the, their inclusion, their inclusivity in politics, but they have no intention whatsoever. Hmm? You understand? So, so, so again, eh, uh, again, me and you, uh, me and you have a civic duty, have a civic responsibility to do X, Y, and Z, to activate to mobilize to finance to huh, show up on election day to ensure that boomers are not voting that was the mantra last year we are still proceeding with it okay so listen it's a huh, hanif jiwan welcome back santisana hanif for the karibisho so yeah let's can we be uh, can we be so in tune? Can we be so in sync with uh, civic education? For instance, I was telling people the other day about uh, this idea of co called gerrymandering. <coughs> gerrymandering is influencing electoral boundaries so as to suit and to serve a certain class, a certain political cluster, a certain dispensation to serve their interests. And I told you what has happened in Kenya, and I'm sure it happens in very many other places. There is a way that urban areas are always conjoined to a rural area or a slum to ensure that the urban people are denied the services because they are the ones who pay the taxes. Slum dwellers don't pay taxes. Rural bread bastards don't pay taxes. So it's the people in the urban areas who pay the taxes. We are the ones who feed these nations. 
this nation and the treasury, we are the ones who fund it. It's not the taxpayer. It's not the slum dweller. So we, you, you will always, and I was using Thika, but I will also go to Nairobi. So you'll see Thika, Thika constituency, if you go and look at the IEBC boundary maps, it is conjoined with a place called Gatuanyaga. Gatuanyaga is a rural area, has a lot of votes, but it's a rural area. All the way to a place called uh, Magogoni, another place called Ngoliba, or Kilimambogo, all those places should not ideally, because they are not even part of Thika district. Tom Otieno Masanga, thank you, thank you. So they, 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 they are not, or they wouldn't even be part of the Thika district if we had rational boundary uh, creation. But they are politically connected so as to deny the Thika people, the, the ones who require water, they require garbage collection, they require street lights, they require drainage. And so you will never speak because the politician knows he can he will always go to bribe the people connected to these other uh, rural or slum areas i'll give you an example for nairobi for relevance so like karen and langata those are very middle class areas clarice mpakani thank you for for your for, for your welcome so uh, karen langata and uh, adjacent areas uh, you know, they are, they, are, they are affluent people who live around there. And who controls them is people of Kibera slums. Kibera slums, that idiot, can survive on less than a dollar a day. Joyce Mudumbi, Karibu Sana. The Kibera Zilao, hey Zilao, my friend, you guy, man. <laughs> I've missed you too, man. Zilao, you guys, you've been supporting me from the jump, man. Thank you very much, Zilao. Yeah. So, Karen, Langata, you know, those, those areas on this other side of Ngong Road, those are very affluent areas, but who controls them? It's the slum dweller, dwellers of Kibera. True or false? Those are the ones who have the majority, and the slum dweller of Kibera can survive on less than a dollar a day. You understand? But somehow, Langata and Karen have to be connected politically to Kibera. And these Kibera people, uh, they, 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 they sell their votes for 1,000 bob during elections. This is called gerrymandering, and that's why you've been ending up with clowns. So let's look at uh, another place. We look at Lavington, look at Kileleshwa. Who decides who will be elected? It's the slum dwellers of Kawangware. Those are the ones who decide. But who crafts the boundaries? It's the politicians. Why do they do so? Because they know they will go to Kawangware and bribe those people who can survive on a dollar a day. They can go and give them money. And so you will always be getting people who are tone deaf to your interests. And it's the middle class who keeps this engine running, this engine called Kenya. And you should shamelessly eh, hold that badge that we are the ones who run. It's not the slum dwellers just because they show up. They show up once every five years. We are the ones who create jobs for them. We are the ones who have employed them in the car wash, in the what? Hmm? Eh, that's Gitsan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You, under, you understand? So we are the ones who create employment. Mamamboga, Sijui, Buchari. We are the ones who keep them in business. But during elections, they will suspend that rational thought and immediately go to the guy who is giving them 1,000 shillings and vote for them. And that's why... They have it has been a deliberate and premeditated uh, affair to connect them to the urban area so that you who does not and who would not even think about selling your vote, let alone for 1,000 shillings, can your, your voting will is usurped. Again, we come to Westlands, think of Westlands, think of everywhere around Westlands, Parklands. I think it's one constituency. Now, those guys, who controls them? It's the slum dwellers of Kangemi. They've been imported by politicians because they know these motherfuckers, all we just need to do is give them 1,000 shillings. That is gerrymandering. I need you to Google it or find it in uh, Wikipedia. That's uh, deliberate and premeditated. So it's you, so we will we will forever remain hostage because poverty is being weaponized, is being used to usurp your voting rights. 
You understand? Uh, I've just, somebody, somebody told me uh, Eldoret has no Eldoret. Like now, when Ruto was the MP of Eldoret North or whatever, he, you will see Eldoret town is connected with a rural area. But the town and the rural areas, their challenges are different. You understand? And so we have to now talk about delinking urban areas from the slums so that if they want to elect an MP who will eat all their CDF money, then fine with them. But me as a middle class person, I don't want my, uh, my, my future, my destiny to be conjoined with somebody who lives on less than a dollar a day because they don't know how, what it takes to pay the electricity bill. They don't know what it takes to pay water to pay service charge, to uh, pay garbage. They don't know. Because then what do they do? They use flying toilets. They do that they have accepted their fate, that they have agreed that this is my life. I don't want to educate myself. I don't want to liberate myself, that I will sell my vote every five-year cycle. Now, because we have understood how can we disrupt it, the many ways we can, we can influence the next boundary review we can file a constitutional petition and say this is this boundaries review has been influenced by politicians for their own ends. It has been eh, like now the William Kabogo, Peter Kenneth are the ones who ensured that the last boundaries within the Fika region and Muranga region are done in their way because now they know where their votes are coming from. And so they budget, they pre-budget using the CDF money. Hmm? James Nkesho says the enemies of the people are those who keep them in ignorance. You understand? So now that we know, we don't want to be, listen, we, we, my, I don't want my fate. I don't want my streetlights. Hmm? So Ale Hamisi is saying revolution, bro, let's revolt. I don't want my fate. I don't want my destiny to be determined by people who don't care about theirs. So these other people who we are talking about, the ones who go on flying toilets, the ones who do what, the ones who can live on less than a dollar a day, what can a dollar do for you, let alone a thousand today in Nairobi? Hmm? You're looking at our electricity bills, and these guys, don't forget, like now they can do to slam in Fika, they get electricity they haven't paid for. Who is paying for? It's the middle class. It's the people around yeah, that area, the ones, they are, your electricity is inflated. Same as Kibera, same as all other slums. They have electricity. They even have tarmac. But we don't have tarmac in the areas where the taxpayers are living. And they, uh, you know, every electoral cycle, they have, to, uh, they have to propagate the us versus them mentality. They have to tell people that you come out because Wale Matajiri, Matajiri Ninani is just a guy who lives I don't know in Kileleshwa, I don't know where, I don't know in the, any middle class area, upper, middle, or lower. They, they, they have to propagate the us versus them. But now we are slowly converging. But either way, all we are saying is we don't want gerrymandering as a tool used to exploit the middle class and favor another class. But while the, the, the reality is they are hoodwinking, the slum dwellers and the peasants that, oh, we care for you, but they don't care about them. They don't, they don't give a crap about them. So for, for, for us to, to, to be safe, we must first redraw the electoral boundaries. And the process has to be done transparently, preferably without the participation of politicians. So that each region, like now, Westlands, should be represented by somebody who is based in Westlands and has the interest of Westlands business people. So that when somebody comes there, the OCS, and says, I want to erect alcohol blow, you say, no, Westlands has uh, casinos, it has hotels, it has everything. We want to maintain these jobs. Again, uh, think of somewhere like Karen. I saw the current residents, uh, they are taxpayers, they are employers, but they will never get a hearing on anyone because at the end of the day, the politician who has been elected there knows his votes are where they are in Kibera. So once you understand the cause, why we are where we are, hmm? Moses Codex, thank you. Why you understand that how we find ourselves here is not by accident. 
is not by what it is not it is premeditated it is well orchestrated you understand and you have to rise up to the occasion and understand that we are fighting big forces eh? at all levels in, in as much as we are obsessed with the presidency and understand uh, how it is causing us grief and consternation there is still more work that needs to be done even eh, below the food chain so the, the question is are you i keep on asking are you ready are you ready to step up or or what do you want you just want to eh, to be seeing who, uh, those chicks who are twerking and what are you ready you know you, because you'll be twerking twerking and then suddenly you're looking for a job to go to saudi arabia eh? you're looking for a job to go to canada i have my friends i was very shocked moving relocating to a different country i people i never expected and i as as much as i don't blame them now is the time now to put into focus eh, the, to channel our collective energy and, and attention to the politics of the day because sambaya my shambaya but we've been so aloof you've been burying burying your head under the sand thinking that it will not affect you today i saw doctors and i covered them uh, you know protesting they're saying universal health care they have not been given contracts they are not being and we are saying let them be employed those are our taxes those are our fellow kenyans that's the far i want when i pull up in a government hospital i find a doctor but now you guys have been taking you know well, and there's nobody who i i i will always use an example like suga shambi uh, timothy kangere good to have you back thank you uh, thank you so suga shambi is in texas or whatever uh, state she is in but using her clout over there using a lot of social media capital that she has accumulated she comes and campaigns for sakaja what has sakaja done forget about all the trolling we do about his dimples and his looks he's the one who has spent the least on development and the most on travel he has spent over 100 uh, close to 200 million on travel you wonder 200 million where is he traveling to in nairobi there is a kid called victor matara who drove from nairobi to south africa and back eh? and he spent uh, 245000 shillings on gas so where is this that sakaja is using 200 million for domestic transport you see how uh, the mistakes you make when you're voting eh? you you're always veering to eh? on the precipice of psychopathy eh? you are there on the edge you're tinkering with your lives eh? based on that eh, that temporary high i was telling people when i vied in thika my own friends the ones i've gone to school with the ones i've done x and y with people i know people we've done shit together they were the ones who are fighting me even my candidates uh, candidacy had not even uh, a commentary woman thank you very much lons my candidacy had not even you know moved eh? Uh, Rich Zig is watching from Windock. Thank you very much. My candidacy had not even <laughs> been approved. They had already, you know, all the maligning, hmm, all the best matching, everything that you can think of. It was people who know me. You understand? It was people who know me, people who are educated, people who. Why do people? Why do Kenyans have so much energy? Especially, you, you know, it moves. It ceases being a joke. It ceases being, you know, another hobby, another pastime. And now it's about your lives. You know, this guy can do X, Y, and Z, but you literally go out of your way, and then you derive so much joy. Eh? It's almost like you're jacking yourself off. You're happy. Eh, you're happy and then they go and drink hey unaona tume block now the question is why is it that the most educated the most exposed are the dumbest you understand it, it's it's a construct and it can be connected to the religious doctrines that you've been following it it is connected to the, your educational curriculum the self hate eh? The the, the 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 idea of self hate the idea of eh, even now <laughs> the people who are supposed to be discussing about hmm, 
Kikuyus are notorious for that. That is DJ Adler over there. The people who are supposed to be, you know, propelling this conversation on civic education, they are not there. They are there. If you go on social media, they're the guys who are talking about EPL and what. Fine, we can talk about EPL, but it can't be all day. You, you, you can't just be desensitized from the political process, from what is happening. You, you cannot just be living your best life well, you clearly see your, the reality is eh? is speaking, is saying something different. So, pardon me if when you see me acting up or it's like almost like a throwing a tantrum, but I'm wondering where are you in this process? Where where are you? Ooh, now that's that's why you're seeing it's extremely hard to do these lives because. I'm not feeling the the punch. I'm not feeling the push. Eh? I'm not feeling the energy. Eh? I'm not feeling the you know. Trust me, it takes me long. It takes any content creator long to do a live. It takes them long. For me, I, you wouldn't believe because my my equipment was all over. Just setting up, setting up here took me like thirty minutes. Just setting up alone and now composing your minds and everything. So. The question is, do we have the push? Am I feeling that I have people behind me? Hmm? Do, are you behind me by, by word? Are you behind me in principle? Are you engaging? Are we part of the civic process? Are we going to change Kenya? Or this is, you know, the more that I speak, then once we get to that place, is back to factory settings. Because there is so much ground to cover. And it's not getting better. And these guys are not getting any... If they're becoming smarter and smarter, I told you, if I am not doing some of the... I don't know what they would be getting away with. Not just me and a few others. So, yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's... incumbent upon every one of us to be part of this process is and don't ask don't don't ask me how do i participate can you just find a way can you don't ask me what can i do i'm here what can i how can you know just move with whatever little impetus that you have just move and you meet with whoever <laughs> whoever is in the journey with you ahead you you don't have to wait you don't have to move with numbers i've told you even when you wish to travel these days, eh? even, even, even when you wish to travel anywhere, if you want to travel, this is my tips for you. If you want to travel, don't consult your friends because they'll pull you down, especially if you're not on the same page. So don't tell your friends, oh, by the way, Leo Nataka Kwenda, concert flani, Leo Nataka Kwenda, out of town. No, if you feel like going, take your bus and go. And then in there, you're going to find other like-minded people. You're going to make friends, new friends. Yeah? If you feel like uh, you start chatting with everyone, oh, you, you're also going to Mombasa, okay, let's go. Hey, bus. You make new friends along the way because chances are the people who are holding you back are your same cliques, are your same family members, the ones who are in, in their own utopia thinking that Kenya is going to be liberated uh, just because of uh, uh, everyone is thinking that elections is a you know, one-day event. No, it's a process. And these guys are smarter than us. And they keep on outsmarting us because of our insensitivity, because of our uh, aloofness. Yeah, they start, I told you about gerrymandering. They started planning these boundaries in 2010, knowing that they are going to benefit from that voting imbalance. Talk football, Tyrone. Thoughts about strengthening of the Kenya shillings. Neville Oliach, Francis, you're a great Kenyan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, I'm going to talk about all those topics maybe sometime later if I don't get to them today. But yeah, so move with the people. I was telling you that the politicians are smart. They start planning in advance. They are now planning how to steal the elections in advance. And so even though us, we are not targeting 100%, we are not targeting uh, to grab everything, we can inflict enough damage so that 40% 
And we have seen just the presence of like-minded people like uh, Okio Mtata in Senate, the impact of one person. So you can imagine 40% of positive electoral uh, individuals, elected individuals, you can imagine the impact that will have to the country. So it, it depends. You, you, you are, they say, you are what you eat. So if you are what you eat, then you clearly are what you consume. So if you're consuming mainstream Gidari media, if you're listening to your pastors, your pastors are paid by the establishment to curate summons, summons that are meant to suppress your revolutionary spirit. So if you're listening to Gidari media, if you're listening to the church, you're you are not in the journey to liberate Kenya. <laughs> you're, you're nowhere. All of, these, all of these people are on the payroll of the establishment. To ensure you are numb, you are desensitized, you are not participating as, a, you know, a leg, you know, conscious citizens. Mwangi Kanyoro. You understand all of these people are on the payroll to ensure that you remain docile. You remain desensitized. You remain frustrated. That's why every, every day the, eh, the, 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 the media headlines are talking about corruption, not the solution to tackle the corruption, but corruption itself. Because now they have planned bullet points, how many corruption cases they are going to be airing on the, uh, on the media headlines, so that you've become used to corruption being a way of life. You've become used to things, abnormal things happening, because after all, this is our Kenya, and you you even uh, reinforce it with uh, narratives and say, Aki, Kenyans, we are corrupt. Kenyans, we are corrupt. You've never probably paid a bribe. You've never been in a police station to pay a bribe. You've not engaged with government and official corruption for a long while. So why should you resign yourself to the fate, to the narrative, to the idealization that you are corrupt? No, you're not corrupt. But others... Yeah, they can because and that's why those headlines are you know scripted from one source they paid a lot of money all these media houses have posted losses but they haven't retrenched anyone don't you don't you wonder yeah? because they are on the payroll there's a lot of money that goes to these headlines then they have fashioned the idea that you must feed on these negative energy so that you can Accept your fate that you are corrupt, but you're not corrupt. You've never paid anything. You've never paid any. Co In fact, I've met so many people. I saw somebody uh, yanking out the the parking, the, the the clamp, the clamp of the parking in Laikipia because he's telling them, "I have paid. I am I am not bribing you. I'm not giving you anything extra. You have clamped my car illegally, and I'm going to remove it forcefully. Remove it." Duncan Mbuthia, Nakuru Kiamuni, Asante Sana. So you, we are going to yank it. We are going to get rid of it because I have paid. Why are you, why are you clamping my car? I saw a grandmother somewhere in Nakuru. Huh? I've, I saw a grandmother somewhere telling a police. Hmm? Telling a policeman that you are here, you are erecting roadblocks. You're trying to charge people to access this road. This road is not even for the government. We are the ones who donated our shambas. And that woman was on, was breathing fire. That show, show was breathing fire. And the worst part is there were young men there who were just looking. Hmm? They were just looking. They were just staring, looking at the grandmother, doing what they should ideally be doing. So even the men have been disenfranchised. They've been emasculated. And it's all been by design. Hmm? Eric Moravi says there's a difference between corruption and extortion. We are extorted. But they want to make you, they want to uh, make it look. They want to sell the idea. They want to fashion the idealization that you are inherently corrupt, that it's in your DNA. No, it's not in your DNA. Things can be better. Things should be better. We have had some periods where there were uh, there, there was some can we call them flashes of brilliance? We've, we've seen some element of, you know, we can do this as a country, we can channel, we can move forward, we can forge with a collective objective. Yeah? So, so yeah, so let's, let, let's, 
that, that's all I can tell you is they are not sleeping. They are planning for the next election. They are campaigning for 2027, even before delivering anything, even before showing any project. They are promoting their imaginary achievements. They are feeding us with cheap and empty rhetoric every goddamn day. Every time they're just talking. And so they've realized that the uh, and it's been amazing to see them being heckled in Bomet, in where in Kiambu they were heckled. This be, we've made great strides as human beings and as people. There were others who were trying to act like, oh, we, we are going to listen to these guys. But the fact that there was heckling and booing in Meru, in Kiambu, there's been there's been some in Mombasa, there's been where the, the fact that that is happening is 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 progress in itself. And so you, when you see what is happening, know that there is. There's, there's progress. It may be just 1%. It may be 10%. There are people who are heckling and booing. They are booing presidential events. So, so, so now that they've noticed that there's a lot of hostility out there, now they are going, they are looking for other places. So number one had been the churches because churches you can, you have the pre-bribed congregants. Uh, for them, you see those church meetings. Everyone you see there has been paid. Now, number three, now I've seen now they are going to the universities. Dindinyoro was in Tomboya University. Uh, Rigiji was in uh, Muranga University. To tell, because they've realized that out here it's hostile. In the media, they are being hammered by Sifuna and Ko. Nobody has time to listen to them. In, in, in the streets, they are, they are being booed and heckled. And that's how we should be keeping them. And so we, my work is civic education. My work is telling you where you're being scammed, where you're being lied to. Well, how does an MP pass a finance bill and then go to gaslight the same, uh, the same farmers, telling them, no, no, you won't be onboarded on the eatings, yet you passed them. And you passed it against our, go our, our good council. And so we are showing these people that, number one, 2027, none of you is coming back. But number two is... As your journey in your journey out of office, you're still not going to to insult our 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 collective intelligence. That that's that's our work. That's your work. Yeah, when you're commenting on any politician's post, you have to tell them this is what is your jinga. You cannot be insulting our intelligence. You cannot be telling us I don't know what. That's your work. Hmm? That's your work. There are people out here who are doing the little. We are. Spending a lot of, it's, it takes a lot of time just to even keep up with these guys because they are not sleeping and they have a vast network, a vast machinery. Eh? Yeah. So they have a vast machinery of people who are at their beck and call, who are ready to disrupt eh? the, our efforts, Kenyans of goodwill. They are disrupting us. So what will you do? You will be part of the solution. You understand? And, you know, you, there has to be, you have to show some enthusiasm. Eh? You have to be on these lives, you're sharing and you're doing what? Hmm? Bradley Chikani, uh, thank you very much. You missed my lives. Na Murushi Kakitu, you didn't, uh, you didn't throw, you didn't throw chums. I haven't seen your chums, Buona. Eh? So, this is it. We, we have seven, more, six more minutes. So, this is it. This is your responsibility. It is our collective responsibility. If you want us to move forward, if you want us to forge this collective uh, objective and channel our energy in this uh, trajectory, then please, please don't be eh, don't, don't be spectators. Don't be, uh, when you're in diaspora, whether you're in diaspora or whether you're where, you, you are equally as responsible as any other Kenyan at home or around the world. Because you are where you are, first of all, because we've been we've been fighting the wrong enemy. So we've been number one, we've been distracted by tribalism, which is why William Ruto's presidency was amazing. Because number one, now we are not being very tribal. We've understood that this finance bill was engineered to hurt everyone, hustlers and the middle class and whoever alike. The dim diminishing of public services, you know. The passports, we've been talking about the passports, NTSA, NTSA system is always down. All of these are designed just to keep us on the edge. 
And so, once you understand that this is what is happening, hmm, now we can forge a united front. But it cannot be, you know, you, you have to keep on motivating the people who you see, who you see putting themselves out there. Africa Today, Anasema Mkorada, Mombasa representing, Santi Sana. You have to be the, the ones, if you see anyone who is going out of their way, to do something that you like, something that you can relate to, then you can, you cannot just be there as a fence sitter thinking, eh? that, uh, I've been meeting people, I've been meeting a lot of people, and then these people tell me, and then these are wealthy people, and these people tell me, ah, I like your stuff, man, nini, nini. And then a guy doesn't even contribute anything. They don't know whether you have spent fuel or anything. They don't even give you anything. These are the people that we are dealing with. So we cannot rely even on the political order of the day to, uh, to, to save us, to liberate us. Because even them, they are in their own utopia. <laughs> they are in their own utopia. <laughs> I told you, you're meeting somebody, you know, somebody tells you, hey, let's meet, what, what, what. you go and meet. Guy does not even know whether you've eaten, whether you've what, nothing. They, they just, ah, sawa, kwaheri. It's crazy, man. So we cannot rely, and I'm telling you, all your major politicians, that's how they operate. It's the entitlement that we've given them. And we've shown them, or they think that we are we are their we are their subjects. You know, we work at their behest. So you, when you meet with someone, you're thinking, oh, you're going to we we can synergize, we can collaborate, we can do something, we can work on a case or something, we can work on some activism. Then no 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 no. Then they are even them they are looking to replace the current political establishment so that they can continue, they can extend the winning streak. Or can we call it looting streak? So it's it's up to you and me now. We we are left with no choice. It's up to you and me to save this country. You understand? However little you think your contribution and participation is, it's more than enough. It is significant, but it is a crime for you right now to be at the periphery, to be a spectator when everything, all of these changes are happening. You understand? You cannot be there at now. Now is when you think that, no, everything of this system is going to collapse. And so we have to overhaul. We have to kick these old bastards away. Because none of them, even the ones who are purporting to be eh, the change, we are not vibing. So it's up to you. It's up to me. Hmm? Alex Mnai. Churn out a blueprint. Uh, Asante Sana for your support, Alex Mnai. So it's you and me. We step up to the plate. These guys, I've met all of them. Trust me, I've met all of them. Other than the ruling party. I don't, I don't have time for the ruling party and their bullshit. But none of them has your interests at heart. Them, even the ones who are there, they are looking to come. They replace, they continue with where the others have left off. You are seeing Ruto cannot pursue Uhuru. Why? Because if he pursues Uhuru as regards to the debt that we've been talking about, Uhuru accumulated 8.4 trillion debt uh, without any project, significant project to show. If he pursues Uhuru, then he knows that the next one is going to come and pursue him. So Uhuru is there. And this is what they've been doing. His corruption, I told you, eh? is a baton. They, they, they have a baton like this, and then they... Pass it on to the next guy. Where and the layer? Kula mali ni mebakisha. Ule monya yatabakia na 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 namfupa and the pia na yeye. So it's is almost like an unwritten agreement eh, where they have decided behind closed doors that hey, we have, we have there all, all these idiots are ready to comply with the paying tax when we are telling employers to deduct. I don't know what they are doing it when we do say X, the media is on board, the churches are on board. And so we are here, we are left in the middle, wandering in the, in the wilderness. But then I'm happy because we are addressing, George Ngugi and Asema Corruption Girl, I'm happy that we are addressing the 8 million Kenyans who did not vote and the 4 million Kenyans who did not register to vote. When we have that in mind, then you won't be distracted 
uh, by you 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 should not be distracted you should not say uh, because they want you to buy that narrative that everyone can be bought everyone is corrupt they want to create a dichotomy a political dichotomy that if you, you if you're criticizing uh, criticizing Kenya Kwisha is inversely propos- proportional to endorsing Azimio. No, all of them are trash. You understand? And it's not a third force. He's an independent force. We don't have... Uh, for now, when a third force emerges, it doesn't mean that now is another political dispensation. And what? No, you are independent. You're saying you don't agree with anything. And even right now as we speak, we understand that both these outfits are losing ground. I mean, look at Raila, what he did the other day. He's uh, in bed with the government because he wants to be the AUC chair. So we don't have, we effectively don't have uh, an opposition. You understand? We, the ruling party is rogue, is corrupt as fuck. So what do we do? Now is the time to engage in conversation. Every other time where you were, Using social media, we have powerful platforms. They cannot, uh, they, they, they are spending a lot of time trying to disrupt our conversations. But at the end of the day, you have nobody else to blame other than yourself. So get your civic education right, get your participation right, get your focus, get everything. Do you know in August, it will only be three years to the next election? Now, over and above that being three years, do you know the last one year? Hana, Santisana, Santisana Hana, thank you very much. Do you know in the last one year, so the 2027, that one year, there is no, it is a campaign year. So you, effectively, we are talking about these guys have two years of solid more governance to do. That's how time flies. So you, you cannot be there as a, you cannot be there as a spectator. What are you going to do? Step up to the plate. Support those who you think are, running your agenda, uh, not just me, we are many, we are, we, are, we are many of us. So support them. And then also you should be taking time to uh, go to these politicians' posts and you troll them on their social media posts and you tell them, stop your garbage, stop insulting our intelligence, you're a thief, you're a thug. Once they understand that we know them, probably through shame they might change, but that, uh, that would be a cold day in hell. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But 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 as long as we cut, we tone down their rhetoric because they are overworking and there is a tendency of uh, the illiterate Kenyans to fall for their garbage uh, because they, they are bribing journalists, you know, left, right and center. Today I saw a journalist called Ken Mijungu from KTN trolling and, uh, you know, just maligning the doctors who are protesting as if he himself will not be sick and need a hospital. Rita Tinina died, and she was died because of what? Because of uh, typhoid or something, or pneumonia. Yes, she died of pneumonia. John Carano, Santisana, yeah, Santisana. She died of pneumonia, acute pneumonia. Catherine Casavulli was raising funds when she was in Kenyatta National Hospital. So these journalists that like Ken Mijung without any honor or shame, trolling those who are fighting for their rights, because he has been paid to disrupt them. How stupid can somebody be? Hmm? Kenneth Imijungu, he's the one who has made me turn down all the interviews that I've gotten from KTN because he's an idiot. You have such journalists, they're idiots. Hmm? I don't know why KTN has him there. He should have been sacked a long time ago. Hmm? So yeah, we, we, we are having or we are making progress, but then we have all these disruptors who are the journalists who are the uh, corrupt clergy. And I told you, the only trustworthy journalist and clergy is a dead one. All of them are on the payroll. You just know that. All the, all the, 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 the summons that you see on Sunday, all of them have been curated somewhere. They've been made somewhere. So you told you, speak about this, speak about this. And those uh, summons are normally uh, tinkering on, you know, uh, obeying the law. Uh, subservience to your political deities or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> they, they are there, they are there. You're, in fact, in ACK, the, 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 the whatever, in ACK, there is this book which we read when we go to an ACK service and there's somewhere, because it was written a long time ago, um, 
is called the, the prayer for the president. Oh Lord, guide our president, give him your wisdom and justice. I'm like, what the fuck, man? We are praying for who? A thief, a thug. But because it's there, because church and state, they are intertwined. Ideally, you should be praying. I've not told you to, to live your salvation. You should be praying alone. You should be meeting with your friends. You have your own Bible study amongst like-minded people. And, you know, you try and, you know, meet your nourish your spiritual needs. But the one, what we have in the mainstream, especially those you call the mainstream, ah, all of those were, ah, those were, especially during Uhuru's time. Occasionally you hear, eh, you hear people say, eh, Uhuru used to meet religious leaders, they still meet. Why is the government meeting religious leaders? Because eh, they, they are not manufacturers, they are not industrialists, they don't have anything of value, they are giving to them, they don't pay taxes. Eh? So it's... <laughs> But they are manufacturers of psychophants. They are manufacturers of zombies. <laughs> People who are told, jump, you ask how high by the system. You understand? So that's why they become very important to the regime, to any regime. So now that you know that, you know what to, even when you go to church, you know what to listen. You know what to, what to absorb, what to digest, you know what to put out. You understand? Because we are not here by accident. We are not, this is well scripted, well coordinated. And your work is to disrupt. Hmm? Your work is to disrupt. You just shake, shake things up. Eh? Okay? So it was very nice. It was very nice. Eric Dolphy, Santi Sana. It was very nice interacting with you guys today. Um, Owen Munene, thank you for your laughter. <laughs> it was nice interacting with you guys today. Uh, let's, I don't, I'm not sure whether I'll do it tomorrow, but next week I, I can try and do three, three days next week. So let's chat. Let's uh, continue engaging next week. I, I hope we, we have bigger numbers. So we cannot be doing the same a hundred and something, eh? 2023, 2024. Yeah. Something's got to give, man. Santi Sana, cheers. Thank you. See you. Thank you for everyone who has participated. Daniel Oranja, Santi Sana. Uh, thank you for anyone who is supporting me financially, morally. Everyone, I get your messages. Nimefika uh, kama nimechelewa. Greetings from New Jersey. Thank you very much, Vali. Nimechelewa, I'll, I'll avail, or this live will be availed, you know, maybe in an hour when it's there's a way it takes like an hour just to to process and upload. So you're 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 still going to watch it. Uh, but uh, Svali, you can still be the Mpesa number is there on the on the live and Adla is sharing it. So anyway, thank you to everyone. Man, it's been uh, it's been interesting. Next, I, I think uh, somebody had asked me to talk about the Kenya shilling. I don't know what is happening, but. Uh, the same governor who told us that the Kenya shilling has been overvalued, suddenly he's telling us that uh, now it's going to be 115 shillings. I'm waiting to see that miracle. But hey, let's say uh, it's a, it's a every day is a, a scam. Mm? You cannot trust this government on anything. But uh, asante ni sana, mungu wa bariki.